Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. God's word, as we already noted, is taken from Genesis chapter 19, beginning with verse 14. We'll read just the, the selected verse. As soon as they, that is the angels, had brought them out, one of them said, Flee for your lives. Don't look back. And don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains, or you will be swept away. This is the word of our great God. In Christ Jesus, our one and only Savior, my dear friends, Lot made a bad choice. If you remember, God so richly blessed Abraham and his nephew Lot, their flocks and herds had grown to such an extent that their servants were beginning to quarrel over who gets to graze their flocks and herds where? Abraham, being the man of God, the hero of faith that he was, became the peacemaker. He stepped up to the plate. And even though he's the older, he could have said, Lot, you go this way, I'll go that way. He gave Lot the choice. Lot, if you go north, I'll go south. If you go south, I'll go north, so that we don't have this quarreling anymore. Lot looked, and the grass looked greener to the south. He chose the south. But as this whole chapter, Genesis 19, brings out, it was not a wise choice because it was close to the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Friends, how blessed you and I are. We're believers in the Lord Jesus. And the Apostle Paul writes in the second chapter of his letter to the Corinthians, first letter, the very last words of that chapter, he says, We, we believers, have the mind of Christ. How blessed we are as we are faced with the various decisions we have in life as it pertains to our relationship with God at all, we want to put God first. We want to put the needs for our souls and the souls of our family first. Lot did not do that. The grass was greener. That's the direction he chose to go. So as we ponder together today, Lot's wife, we're reminded and encouraged, listen, Listen to God's warning. Listen to God's blessing. Perhaps you recall, God and two angels had taken on human form and went first to Abraham. They went to announce to Abraham a great miracle. In one year, Abraham, who would be 100, and his wife, way beyond childbearing age, age 90, they were going to have a baby, a baby boy. But then the Lord also seized the opportunity to let Abraham know trouble was coming to Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham prayed. He had in his heart his nephew Lot. And he knew how wicked Sodom and Gomorrah were. He prayed, if there are 50 righteous, Righteous, of course, are believers. If there are 50 righteous in those cities, will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? No, God said. This is quite a lesson on prayer because Abraham keeps lowering the number down to 10. If there are 10 believers, 10 righteous in those cities, will you spare the cities for their sakes? God said, yes, what a merciful... God we have. The two angels disguised as human beings went to check out Sodom. And when they arrived toward evening, Lot happened to be there to greet them and he insisted 
that they come into his house and eat and stay overnight there. Lot knew the wickedness of the city, didn't he? So Lot is an example, and his wife too. How many how many women do you know if their husbands or or children would invite all kinds of guests to come and stay overnight? How many women do you know who would be happy about that? So we are uh, we are reminded here of the gift of hospitality that Lot and his wife have. And it's an example of what the writer to the Hebrews talks about, encouraging God's people this way. In chapter 13, beginning with verse 1. Keep on loving each other as brothers. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Well, lo and behold, later that evening, there's a knock on the door. Here's a mob, we're told, young and old men from throughout Sodom are pounding on the door, and they want to sexually abuse the men, the strangers. How shocking. How unbelievable. And lots of verses, right? these are his guests. He's there to protect them. He even goes to the extent, can you imagine, how horrified his wife must have been when he said, I have two daughters, go ahead and use them as you wish. But no, these wicked men don't want the young ladies. They want the men. Doesn't this help teach us what God thinks of this sin? So here, the angels, well, it's an example of, of what the Lord was talking about to Abraham, where, where we read in Genesis 18, then the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. Here's our Lord speaking to Abraham as a human being. It's good. We, we know he knows all things, but he's speaking as a human being here. And of course we see the truth of those words. Coming up, John, first time we need to share with you the angels have to actually pull Lot inside the door, close it, and strike the mob with blindness because they're about to tear, run over Lot and tear the door down in their hunger for having these two men to abuse. Now at the coming of dawn, the angels urge Lot saying, hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. As we read earlier, Lot tried to rescue his future sons-in-law. They wouldn't listen. They thought he was joking. So now the angels are urging Lot and his daughters and wife, let's go. He hesitates. When he hesitated, I wonder why he hesitated. Isn't it an illustration? He likes the city. He likes his stuff. He's hesitating about leaving it all behind. And wow, the men, the angels, grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and his two daughters and led them safely out of the city. Here's some beautiful words. For the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, Flee for your lives. Don't look back. And don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains, or you will be swept away. And here's the angels rescuing them from destruction along with the city. And isn't it something? Lot still has to go on from there. But Lot said to them, No, my lords, please. Your servant has found favor in your eyes, and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me, and I'll die. Look, here's a town near enough to run to, and it is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. Talk about the gracious 
will of our Lord, the kindness he has, the mercy he has, his wish was granted. <coughs> My friends, do we ever struggle with our priorities in life, with the choices that may confront us? Or are our toys and our joys in life more important than what is pleasing to our Lord? Take, for example, the fun of fishing. If you met people like I have, they will not miss one opportunity to go fishing, but they miss opportunities to honor their Lord, worship Him. How about on vacation? I was listening to one friend and he was saying how great it is to go on vacation and, and then visit sister churches wherever they may go. And, how, how great it is to meet other pastors and meet other brothers and sisters in Christ. Do we step, if we could squeeze in a vacation in our busy schedules, do we leave the Lord behind as we go out and have the joys that a vacation may offer? Praise the Lord when families spend time together, even if it's watching TV and they can talk about stuff that may not be all that good that they see on TV. But do we make even more important family time after the meal, after the food for our bodies. Having a family devotion, have some food for our souls. Isn't that sad? The people fed by 5,000 men, perhaps if they have wives and two children, 20,000 people witness this miracle. And they want the bread king instead of the bread of life that can save their souls. We sometimes like those folks, happy for bread for our bodies, but not so hungry for the bread for our souls. Oh, we all have to confess our sins here, don't we? Yes, and we deserve the fire and brimstone of our God's wrath forever in hell for these sins and all our sins. But praise God, just like the, like the angels took. Lot, his wife, and two daughters by the hand and led them away from destruction. And just like loving parents hold on to the hands of their little children so they don't get hurt, so the Holy Spirit is taking you and me by the hand. And through baptism, through the Word of God, led us to Jesus. Convinced us of our sin. And convinced us. Think of it. Our sin left a perfect joy. The unbelievable bliss of heaven aside to come and be born, to go through all the trials and troubles just like you and I face in life and then die on a cross be left behind perfect joy so you and I through faith can have perfect joy knowing the truth of this promise, Jesus said the one who believes in me will live even though they die. Forgiveness of sins means life. Having the Lord in our lives here, that's true life. And eternal life as well. And as far as joy, true joy is found in the words of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 10. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That joy no one can take away. The joys of this world well, that can be here today and gone tomorrow. Just like our toys can be here today and gone tomorrow. But the joy of the Lord, that's ours for a lifetime and for an eternity. So yes, listen. Listen to God's warning as He speaks them in, our, in His Word. And listen to God's blessing. Beautiful words once again. We read once already twice this morning. For the Lord was merciful to them, to Lot and his family. The Lord heard the concern of Abraham. So he sends angels to come to the rescue of Lot. He was merciful to them. He's answering Abraham's prayer. By the time Lot reached Zohar, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah. 
from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus, he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. I was wondering, would there be any ruins from these two cities? I took out my own Bible and it has really nice maps in it. I was shocked. I don't know if you can see the red writing in this map. But Gomorrah and Sodom are mentioned, are pointed out down in the bottom part of the Dead Sea, the lowest place on earth, 1,300 feet below sea level. Bible scholars believe that Sodom and Gomorrah once stood and was covered by the sea, the Dead Sea, which tells us God not only destroyed the cities and the vegetation, but the very ground on which those cities once stood. Wow, what a lesson of God's wrath and of his mercy to spare Lot, who made that bad choice to take his family close to that wicked city. But Lot's wife looked bad, and she became a pillar of salt. My friends, a lot of the pictures that artists had depicting this have, like they're just outside the city, and she has glanced over her shoulder. When we read it from the Bible, that's not the case, as we just read. But his wife, his two daughters are already at shore. They already are a long ways away. So it wasn't just a passing glance over the shoulder. This was an act of rebellion, an intentional act on the part of Lot's wife. She doesn't put love for the Lord into practice here. She shows where her heart lies. It's still with the city. It's still with her stuff. <coughs> she has to look back and becomes a pillar of salt. A reminder for you and me, dear friend, let's not be looking back. The sins of the past are forgiven and forgotten. Let's go forward. And as Jesus instructs his disciples in Luke, I believe it's chapter 13, he's instructing them about being ready for a weekend. Remember Lot's wife, he says. We can learn a lot from Lot's wife. We got plenty to do that lies before us. Praise the Lord, we can forget the past. Forget past sins. It's washed away, clean, and well on the promises of our God. So wonderful. As Jesus shares with us in John 14, verse 27, Peace I be with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to, to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Peace instead of trouble. Forgiveness instead of guilt. Confidence of God's love and guidance in the choices we have to make in life. That as He guides us, they will be good choices, blessings for our souls and others, and honoring our great God. So Jesus reminds us in John 16. In the world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. God, Jesus defeated sin in the sinful world around us. We did not give in. And Satan, you and I can't lose. And his assurance is, as we deal with the challenges and problems and choices of life, ask and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. What blessings to listen. What blessings to seize the opportunities we have in prayer as we deal with the challenges and choices of life. Very important to listen. Already as children, I witnessed it many years ago, where we lived on Grove Street in Port Atkinson. It was a fairly busy 
city street, not a main drive or anything, but a fairly busy street. And across the road lived some neighbors, and they had children too, and especially one boy was chummed around with our boys. He happened to be at our house this one day, and his daddy happened to drive up past, and he was he parked on the other side of the street. He's getting out of his car. And his little boy is running to his daddy. Look, there's a car coming, barreling down the road. I had one second to shout, end! And he stopped. Praise God, he stopped. And the car went by. The boy listened. Sometimes it's that important, isn't it? That our children, grandchildren, know to listen, because they may not have a second chance. Praise God, we have learned the privilege, the blessing of listening to the voice of our God. How good the voice of Jesus is. How wonderful to listen to Him and His promises. Amen. And the peace of God, which is beyond our dreams, shall guard and keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.